Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Brisman. I'm a neurosurgeon, and I'll be speaking to you today on the subject of pituitary tumors. Pituitary tumors are relatively common, and it's possible maybe 20 to 25% of the population has a very tiny pituitary tumor that never bothers them. But it's much less likely that a person has a tumor that's either bigger or causes symptoms that require treatment. Pituitary tumors are almost always benign pituitary adenomas and can almost always be treated either with observation or minimally invasive techniques. The pituitary gland is often referred to as the master gland of the body and helps regulate the hormones that go throughout the body. Pituitary tumors often present gradually in one of two ways, one being in uh, people having hormone levels that are either too high or too low as a result of the tumor, where the second is people can have vision problems because the tumor can grow upward and compress the optic nerves, optic chiasm, which lie right above the pituitary gland, and can cause visual difficulties. In particular, often a syndrome called bitemporal hemianopsia is produced where people have trouble seeing vision on the periphery. Less commonly, pituitary tumors can present suddenly with a syndrome called pituitary apoplexy, where the tumor suddenly bleeds or swells into itself and people can have sudden deterioration in vision or low hormone production that can be life-threatening. Diagnosis of pituitary tumors is usually made by MRI with and without contrast, though in a patient who can't get an MRI because they have a pacemaker, for example, one could make the diagnosis with a CAT scan. The um, tumor is also usually evaluated and diagnosed with blood tests, particularly endocrine testing, which may show that the hormones in the body are either too high or too low. If the hormones are too high, it may tell us exactly what type of tumor it is because we would know it's producing an excess amount of that particular hormone. Pituitary tumors are categorized into microadenomas, which are tumors under one centimeter, or macroadenomas, tumors that are over a centimeter, about the size of a marble. They can become even bigger than that. Pituitary tumors have several major categories. The, the most common type is called non-secretory adenomas, which are tumors that do not produce an excess of pituitary hormone. These can lead to low pituitary hormone production because the tumor can compress the normal pituitary gland. Also, any mass in the area of the pituitary gland by compressing the adjacent pituitary stalk can cause a mild elevation of the hormone prolactin. Secondly, there are what's called secretory pituitary adenomas, or adenomas, tumors that produce an excess of hormone, the most common of which are prolactinomas, acromegaly tumors, and Cushing's disease tumors. The prolactinomas uh, lead to an excess production of prolactin. This can lead to loss of menstrual period or irregular period in women, or infertility, or milky discharge from the breast. Uh, acromegaly involves an excess production of growth hormone in the body, which in adults can lead to enlargement of the hands or feet or enlargement of internal organs, which can uh, cause serious problems. Uh, in childhood, if this should develop, this can lead to enlargement of the arms and legs in a condition called gigantism. The third common type of secretory pituitary tumor uh, is one that leads to Cushing's disease. Uh, this is a result of excess uh, ACTH or, uh, or cortisol within the body. Uh, this can lead to a constellation of symptoms including high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, obesity, round faces, and easy bruisability. Um, different options for treating pituitary tumors include observation, which involves clinical observation, following people with blood tests, eye exams, and MRIs. It can involve surgical removal of the tumor, and the surgery is usually done through a pretty minimally invasive route through the nose passages, or called a uh, transphenoidal approach. Uh, radiation is an option, which usually is done by pretty focused, super focused radiation or radiosurgery, but can also be involved uh, with relatively focused conventional fractionated uh, radiation, external beam radiation. And finally, with medicines that can address the high or low levels of hormone throughout the body. I'll give my general algorithm or method for treatment, although, again, there are going to be different ways of treating, and uh, each case has to be viewed individually. In general, the small non-secretory adenomas or small 
asymptomatic prolactinomas, I will observe and just leave alone and watch. People with prolactinomas that are causing symptoms uh, or large prolactinomas are usually treated with just medicine alone, uh, usually with medicines like bromocryptine or cabergoline. And these prolactinomas usually do not need surgery unless the tumor presents uh, with bleeding or has a large cyst in it or the rare case where medicines are just not tolerated. For tumors that are non-secretory macroadenomas that are big, over a centimeter, um, usually surgery will be considered the first line of treatment, though again we will look at whether the tumor is compressing the optic chiasm, what is the age of the patient, the health of the patient, but usually surgery will be the uh, first approach um, with stereotactic radiosurgery as a follow-up if there is a residual tumor after the surgery where the tumor is continuing to grow. For, and if the person has low levels of pituitary function, uh, we would give supplement, uh, supplemental medicine for that. For patients with secretory adenomas uh, that are either acromegaly or Cushing's, whether these are big tumors or small tumors, usually my first preference is to do surgery, again, through a transphenoidal route, through the uh, nasal passages. Uh, if there is residual tumor, if there is recurrence, if there is continued elevated hormones, my second uh, choice would be, again, to do stereotactic radiosurgery, focus radiation on the tumor, and again, for hormone uh, imbalances, if, the, if there are levels that are low, one would replace those hormones, and if certain levels remain high, uh, we have medicines that can normalize those hormones. In acromegaly, these medicines include such uh, medicines such as sandistatin, pegvisimont, and cabergoline. In the case of Cushing's, uh, medicines that can be used include ketoconazole, deseriotide, and also cabergoline. In summary, pituitary tumors are almost always benign conditions. We have several different techniques, almost all minimally invasive, for treating these tumors uh, with excellent prognosis. Thank you.